Number 43, letter A. Calculate the power per square meter of reaching Earth's upper atmosphere from the sun. Take the power output of the sun to be 4 times 10 to the 26 watts. All right, so uh, here we have a picture, all right? In the center is the sun, and the sun is emitting right, a certain power, all right? Now, this is a two-dimensional picture that I have drawn here, right? But you have to think about it in three dimensions. So uh, this really is not a circle, but it's a sphere, okay? So just keep that in mind. So remember that the sun is emitting the power in all directions, and the Earth, right, relative to the sun, is located a distance of about 1.5 times 10 to the 11 meters uh, away. So what we now need to do is somehow we have to now calculate, right, the uh, power per square meter, okay? So power per square meter, just keep in mind, uh, would be essentially the watts per meter squared, right? This would be the same thing as saying power per square meter, okay? So these are the units that we want to get. Now, we do know the wattage uh, of the sun, right? We do know the power output of the sun. We know it to be, as they told us over here, 4 times 10 to the 26 watts. So that's basically the value that we're going to place in the numerator here. So actually, let me not write an equal sign, but let me just uh, write a little arrow. So it'll be 4.00 times 10 to the 26 watts. Okay, now I have to divide it by then the square meter. So remember that the uh, this figure here, the circle really represents a three-dimensional sphere. And what I'm looking to do is I'm looking to calculate the surface area of that sphere, meaning the entire area of the sphere, okay? The outside edge of it, if you, if you th uh, think about it that way. So uh, we need to know a formula that details the surface area of a sphere. And that formula is this. So here I'll write surface area of a sphere will be equal to 4 pi, oops, 4 pi, hold on one second, 4 pi times the radius squared, okay? So here is my radius. The radius in this problem is the distance between the Earth and the Sun. And if this is in meters and I plug that unit in for the radius, right, that would be meters squared. And that would give me my value down here on the bottom. So the value I need to plug in down here, right, is the surface area of the sphere. So this would be equal to 4 pi times in that radius, 1.5 times 10 to the 11 meters, and that's squared. Okay? So let me just get rid of, just for now, let me just get rid of the W up here. Just remember that, that it is in watts. I'll call this, oops, I'll call this part A. And let's just calculate it. All right, so it's 4 times 10 to the 26 divided by now, parenthesis, 4 times pi times 1.5 times 10 to the 11th uh, squared. And we get a value of about, so here we, we get a value of about uh, 1 point, yeah, 4, 1, 1 point 4, 1 times 10 to the 3 times 10 to the 3 uh, watts, okay, per meter squared. So that would be the unit. All right, now we can leave it in that unit. I mean, we can convert it to kilowatts if we want, right? Uh, let's see what letter B asks us to do, and then we'll see uh, what we should do from there. So part B, it says part of this is absorbed. So part of this wattage that we, the watt per square meter, part of that is absorbed uh, and reflected by the atmosphere so that a maximum of 1.3 time, uh, excuse me, 1.3 kilowatts per meter squared uh, reaches the Earth's surface. So now it says calculate the area in squared kilometers of solar energy collectors needed to replace an electric power plant that generates 750 megawatts if the collectors convert an average of 2% of the maximum power into electricity. All right, so there's a lot of things going on in this part, a lot of conversions. So I think this probably would be best um, represented as a dimensional analysis problem. Okay, so first start with the question. What are we looking to calculate? It says calculate the area in kilometers squared, right? So I need to find my ending unit here is going to be kilometers squared, okay? And the job here is going to be to set up some conversions, right? So that when I multiply them together, I don't know if they're going to be three, but I'm just representing, representing it as three here. Um, when I set up these conversion factors, all the units will cancel, right? Whatever units I place, wherever, all they, all of them will cancel except for kilometers squared. OK, 
Okay, that's the goal. All right, just to give you an idea of the setup. So let's see what we can do. All right, so let me get rid of all this. So um, let's first start with, and it doesn't really matter what you start with necessarily. Uh, let's first start with uh, this value over here. 1.3 uh, kilowatts per uh, square meter. Okay. So now I know I need to get my final answer in kilometers squared, right? I need to get the distance in the numerator. All right. Uh, but, or I should say the area, right? In the numerator. Uh, but here the area is in the denominator. So if I were to rewrite this as a fraction, right, it would be essentially this 1.30 kilowatts per meter squared. And I can take this fraction and flip it if I want, right? This is really per one meter squared. Uh, so this could be one meter squared over 1.30 kilowatts, right? These are essentially the same thing. I just flipped the fraction. So what I'm gonna do though, is I'm gonna use this as my value in my dimensional analysis here, one meter squared, one meter squared over 1.30 kilowatts. And the reason why I use the flip version, again, remember, I have to get an answer that has kilometers squared in the numerator, right? This, this is really over one. So I need this in the numerator. I need the area in the numerator, okay? Now what I'm gonna do is, why don't we uh, take this value and just do that conversion right away? So let's get rid of the square meter. All right, so I'm gonna put meters on the bottom, kilometers on the top. I know that there's a thousand meters in one kilometer, but the thing is, this is only one meter, and here I have two. So basically what I have to do is square this. And if I square this, it would be the same thing as writing this again, right? 1,000 meters over one kilometer. And now you'll notice both the meters will cancel and then kilometer times kilometer is kilometer squared, okay? So instead of just writing that twice, I can simply just put a little squared sign around it. So this meter will cancel because it's really meter squared will cancel that square meter, okay? So now, um, we move on to the next step. So my answer here is in kilometer or squared kilometers uh, per kilowatt. Now, let's take into account now. Now, well, yeah, why don't we do this? Um, why don't we take into account now uh, the percentage, right, uh, that the solar panels can actually collect, right? It says that they only collect 2% of the maximum power, okay? So if they only collect 2% of the maximum power, basically what that means is that although this is the available power over here on the left, that's the available power per square meter, uh, we can only collect 2% of that, right? So basically what I would have had to do uh, is multiply this value here by 0.02, right? To find 2% of it. So I could have done that at the start, by the way. Maybe that, it, it doesn't really matter. Maybe I should have. Um, maybe it might have. It might make a little more sense. But in terms of where I need to plug it into my conversion now, I need to plug it in in the bottom, right? Why? Because again, I have to take two percent of the kilowatt value, okay? Because it says two percent of the maximum power. So wherever your kilowatt is in your conversion, here it lives in the denominator. I then will have to multiply that by two percent. So I'm going to place my value of 0.02 in the denominator. And I'm going to put a one in the numerator as just a placeholder. Now there's no units associated with this because it's just a percentage. It's just a ratio. Okay. So now this uh, conversion factor here has taken care of this value. So let me just let me just cross that out. Or you know what? Let me highlight it in red. What we've taken care of. So we've taken care of that. We have also taken care of this. Okay. And we did do our conversion to kilometers already. So that looks good, right? So I'll kind of just highlight that. And there's only one other piece of information here, guys, right, that we didn't take into account yet. And what is that? Well, it's the actual power that the power plant needs to generate. And the power plant needs to generate 750 megawatts of power. So first thing I notice is, well, this unit is in megawatts. And in my formula here, it is in kilowatts. So, right, we have to do a conversion. So why don't I convert this value into kilowatts? I'll do it up here on the upper uh, left. So we'll do 750, 750 megawatts, right, multiplied by, you can do the conversion right away by knowing that when you compare megawatt to uh, kilowatt, 
that there are a thousand kilowatts in a megawatt. Okay, so we're basically multiplying that value by uh, 1000. So this would be 7.5 times 10 to the five now, kilowatts. Okay, so this is the kilowatt value. Now this value will go, if I'm looking at how I want my conversion to work, I need to cancel the kilowatts, right? So they're gonna go in the numerator here so that they cancel, all right? So here we have 7.5 times 10 to the five kilowatts. Now guys, just take a step back. Kilowatts cancel, what is the only unit that's left? The only unit that is left is kilometer squared. That's it, all right? And therefore, this conversion should be correct. So all we have to do is calculate. So multiply everything in the numerator. Obviously they're all ones except for the 7.5 times 10 to the five. And then divide that by the entire denominator. So 1.3 uh, times 1000 squared. Do not forget to square the thousand. And then multiply that by 0.02. And what do we get here now? So we get now, and I should have wrote an equal sign there at the end instead of a multiplication sign. So this will now equal 28.8. So 28.8 squared kilometers right, would be necessary uh, to supply or to substitute that particular power plant. All right, so great. Now let's take a look at, well, is there a letter C? No, there is no letter C, but this is all part of letter B, I guess. So now we'll continue. So it says, um, with the same set of assumptions, what area would be needed to meet the United States energy needs? All right, so let me just do you, uh, let me change the color. Let me just do the United States, and then from here, the rest of the calculation is gonna be the same. All right, so you can basically just copy from there. So I'll call this, I'll still call this letter B, but it's, you know, moving, it, it, it's the second part of letter B. So for the United States, um, we need to now supply uh, this many joules of energy, okay? So we need to find, again, we need to find the area necessary. So here uh, we need to uh, figure out kilometers, okay? Squared, that is. And this time we are given a uh, joule value, all right? So basically the only, the only difference here um, is going to be in terms of uh, they, they didn't give us this particular value, right? In, in terms of they didn't tell us that the power plant generates uh, that many megawatts um, of power. So that's not a problem, right? So basically this part of the conversion we just did is going to stay the same. There's gonna be no change to that whatsoever, all right? Because um, if we think about you know what's given in here, we're told the maximum amount of power per square meter that can reach the Earth's surface we want to know the answer in kilometers squared instead of meters squared, and we still have the same efficiency of just being able to collect 2% of the uh, power. So that whole part will exactly stay the same. All right, so let me just take this and let me copy it. All right, one second, just so I don't have to rewrite it. And we will copy it, there it is, and we'll put it on down here, okay? And we'll also just change the color. Why not? There we go. All right. So that part stays the exact same. There's no change. The only change now is in this category because this was the power generated by a power plant. All right. And now they are, instead of telling us power, they're giving us an energy value. But the thing is, right, if you look in terms of our formulas here, we need to cancel the kilowatt, right? The kilowatt didn't cancel yet with anything. So we actually need to take this value in joules and convert that into power. Well, how is energy and power related? Well, we have the formula over here, right guys? Here's the formula that it says, and I'll write it over down here on the bottom left. It says that the power is equal to the energy over time. So in order to calculate power, I need to know energy in joules and I need to know time. Well, they didn't really tell us the time in the problem, right? They just said that the energy, United States energy needs is 1.5 times 10 to the 20. Um, is that per year, per day, per century? What is it? Um, should be per year, okay? So if that's the energy value per year, then we do know the time value. Now remember, the time here has to be in seconds in my formula, okay? The, this time has to be in seconds. So 
Uh, in order for me to calculate, I'm going to plug in my energy of 1.05 times 10 to the 20 joules divided by, but I need the bottom now to be in terms of seconds. I cannot plug in a year because that's not the right unit for power. So let's do the conversion. I'm going to do it up here on the top. So we got one point, not one point. We got to convert a year and we have to take that and convert that into uh, seconds, right? So remember year on the bottom, um, day on the top. 365 days in a year, day on the bottom, hour on the top, 24 hours in a day, and then hour and seconds, there's 3,600 seconds in an hour. Okay, and we can just calculate this. So 365 times 24 times 3,600, and we get a value of 3.15 times 10 raised to the 3, 7, right? times 10 raised to the seven, and that is seconds. Okay, so this is the average time. Oops, this is the time. Why did I do that again? There we go. So now that's the value I'm gonna plug in down here. So this will be 3.15 times 10 to the seven seconds, and now I can calculate the power, right? So now this is 1.05 times 10 to the 20 divided by 3.15 times 10 to the seven. Okay, so this is 3.33, 3.33 times 10 raised to the 12th. Now remember, this is in watts. So that's fine, but remember, I have to find kilowatts, right, in order to cancel the unit. So all I have to do is just do a conversion here. Just divide this value by 1,000, or just subtract three from the exponent. They're gonna lead to the same result. So this is really 3.33, times 10 to the nine kilowatts. Okay, so this is the power needed for the United States um, in a year. So now that's the number that gets plugged up here, 3.33 times 10 raised to the nine, and that's in terms of kilowatts. So notice the kilowatts would now cancel, and now we have our answer. Now we can calculate, right? You can put this over one if you like, that's fine. So now if we calculate, we will get our answer. All right, now remember the same thing is gonna be the, it's gonna be the same for Australia. The, the only difference is now the uh, energy values change. So in terms of your formula, you just change that number. Okay, and then this number would change and that's it. All right, so you guys should know how to do the, the remaining two. So let me calculate here. So we have 3.33 times 10 to the ninth. Divide that now by 1.3 times 1,000 squared, don't forget that, and then times 0.02. And what do we come up with? We come up with a crazy answer now, right? We would need, we would need one, uh, 1.28, 1.28 times 10 raised to the five squared kilometers, all right? That's a tremendous, that's 128,000 square kilometers. So just to give you guys a frame of reference here in terms of how large this land uh, area would be, um, just consider that you know the state of New York is about 150,000 uh, square kilometers, and this is 128,000. So basically, you know, we would need a land mass of half of New York uh, in order to supply um, the energy needs, right, for uh, the entire country, all right? So it's a pretty pretty decent uh, sized landmass. So guys, thank you so much for tuning in. Uh, please remember to subscribe, and I look forward to helping you with the next question. Take care.